Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Dr. Ahmed El Saeed Abdigili, lecturer of nephrology. Uh, this was one of the clinical rounds that was planned for you this semester. So I'll try to take you uh, in a journey uh, to the hemodialysis unit uh, through these minutes to uh, enjoy with us what happened inside our hemodialysis unit. First, what are the types of renal replacement therapy? Any patient who have reached who has reached to an end stage renal disease have one of three ways: either to prepare for hemodialysis or prepare for a peritoneal dialysis or renal transplant, according to the availability and according to what the patient prefer. Either the hemodialysis, which may take some time from the patient, three days a week, each session four hours, to have 12 hours per week, or either the peritoneal dialysis, which can be done at home, or either the renal transplant therapy, uh, renal transplant, so he will require a donor to donate a kidney for him. This is for living donor or a deceased donor cadaveric after the brainstem this can get the organ from the, this donor and he will have to take the immune suppressive therapy lifelong to protect this kidney from rejection so if we start with hemodialysis today what are the urgent indications these are not the indications for any patient to start hemodialysis but these are the urgent indications to start hemodialysis what are the urgent indications to start hemodialysis if the patient is coming to you now in the emergency department with a rising serum creatinine and you have to take the decision whether to start hemodialysis or not for this patient as an acute first I have to differentiate between two types of dialysis the chronic hemodialysis and the acute hemodialysis. The acute hemodialysis, you have a patient coming with an urgent indication and you want to start a hemodialysis for him. So you can pass this emergency and the patient be well. Chronic hemodialysis is to prepare the patient who have reached end stage renal disease. So he will stay on hemodialysis for the remaining of his life or either if he can get renal transplant so the patient who is coming in an acute setting will have an indication to start hemodialysis like if the patient have a refractory fluid overload you can hear crackles or crepitation on bilateral on his chest and this means the patient has a pulmonary edema and not responding to diuretics so he may start hemodialysis with ultrafiltration to remove this excess fluid if the patient has hyperkalemia with ECG changes and this hyperkalemia not responding to medical treatment or you can see an ECG change for this patient you have to start hemodialysis for him to avoid sudden cardiac arrest also if the patient have signs of uremia like uremic encephalopathy uremic fits or convulsions, severe vomiting, hematemesis and demelina due to uremic gastropathy, pleurisy, pericarditis, these are indicators to start hemodialysis. Patient coming with severe metabolic acidosis with pH less than 7.1 and bicarbonate less than 10. This may start our urgent indication to start hemodialysis. Also, some patients coming with alcohol and drug intoxication may require hemodialysis to remove this alcohol and toxins from their blood, especially, or even if their serum creatinine is not elevated. So they may need dialysis just for the toxicity of the drug. So now to start our journey in the hemodialysis unit. First, you can see this is the arm of our patient. 
but this for the chronic hemodialysis patient who have created an AV fistula and this fistula is functioning now and he can start hemodialysis first this is the first needle which will take the blood from the patient or what we call the arteria both the arteria and the venous needles are inserted in the vein nothing is inserted in the fistula or the artery i will later describe this or explain this so this is number one the needle which will take the blood from the patient and this blood will be taken under the force which is created by the blood pump this pump is adjusted and has certain speed so it can take or certain velocity so it can take and, uh, and prescribe the amount of blood per minute from our patient after this here there is the heparin pump which will inject the heparin over the session to prevent the clotting of the blood this you can see this in some hemodialysis machines and other hemodialysis machines you may not see the heparin bump and we can give heparin at the beginning of the session which will be long acting over the session after this here we can see the filter or the dialyzer the blood enters from above through the arterial side will we inside this filter the blood will exchange with the dialysate the different component to clear and remove the toxins from the blood after this the blood comes from down like this to pass to the air trap chamber where the blood if there is thrombus or there is air embolism will be detected here in this inside this chamber and then it will return back to our patient through this needle which is directed towards the heart so this is a simple idea i will describe more after this now we can see the same description but here this is actually from our unit the patient and the machine you can see here first as we said before the needle which takes the blood from the patient and then here this is the pump <coughs> which takes the blood this bump can be adjusted usually we adjust or the ideal to adjust this bump 300 to 500 milli per minute so it will take from the patient about 300 millis to 500 millis of blood per minute except if, the, if this patient is cardiac you can lower this bump to about 200 or 250 so this will decrease the load over the heart after this the blood will pass with the arrow with the yellow arrow through this line till it enter inside the filter through the arterial through this red line inside the filter there will be the exit change and different processes we will describe after this after passing inside the filter you can see on the upper side of the filter this is the site of entrance of the blood and on the lower side of the filter this is the exit of the blood from the filter where it will pass to the air chamber where which will detect if there is thrombus or there is air on place before the blood passed back to the patient and they enter through the venous or the other needle which is directed towards the heart so simply this is the idea of the AV fistula this AV fistula you can create for the chronic patient who come and follow with you and you know your patient is CKD now and he will have to start hemodialysis and the GFR now uh, while you are following your patient the GFR is decreasing over time and you can see that the GFR of the patient is blue 15 now you can tell your patient you have to create an AV fistula we have different sites for the AV fistula this one is a radial AV fistula which there is a connection between the radial artery and the cephalic vein or cephalic vein here there is connection between the side of the artery and the side of the vein 
where the pressure inside the artery will be transmitted to the vein. This is called arterialization of the vein. So any one of you can ask why we don't connect the needles directly to the artery. Okay, the artery is a deep structure, so it will be difficult. Also, it has pain receptors in the wall, so it may be painful all over the session. Also, has a high pressure inside. So another one can say, okay, we can connect it just to the vein. The wall of the vein is weak and it will be inflamed. And after some sessions, you, will, you may not find many veins to connect and the vein may rupture over the session. And it has inflammation, thrombophlebites or anything like this. So after some session, we will not have any veins or any access to connect to the vision. So the idea comes to connect the artery to the side of the vein so you can cause arterialization of the vein. So the wall of the vein, the pressure inside the artery will be transmitted to the vein and the wall of the vein will be strong enough to, to so you can connect the needles over the session many and many times. Also you can get now a strong vein with which will be elongated and also it's superficial so you can connect the needles easily each session one needle is connected down which is the arterial one to take the blood and the other one is connected upward with a distance about five centimeter between both needles and also five centimeter from the, the av fistula i have to tell you something the needles are not connected to the fistula itself I mean the opening between the artery and the vein also the needles are not connected to the artery both needles and I will repeat this both needles are connected to the vein only to avoid rupture of the heavy fistula which may cause disastrous bleeding here you can see this is another fistula where you can see this is a basilic one you can see the yellow arrow this is the scar of the operation this is the scar of the basilic this is a connection between the basilic vein and the brachial artery here this is the scar of the operation the other arrow will detect or will be directed to this is the vein this is the vein which you where you can connect the needles this is the vein where we can connect the needle so you can see that the scar of the operation we don't connect the needles and, and this is the site of the fistula or the opening and we don't connect the artery we connect both needles to the vein where the in the upper side of the arm where you can see the arrow showing you the vein where we can connect the needles so this is the third type the next type or the second type we have the radiocephalic we have the basilic and the third one is the brachiocephalic where you can connect the brachial to the cephalic and you can see the scar of the operation at the cubital fossa but is not in this uh, picture or this image okay so what is this this is the jugular catheter or the venous catheter i told you that the fistula you can connect to the needles or for the patient with chronic hemodialysis so if the patient is not chronic or coming to you in acute setting and he has no AV fistula and you want now to start hemodialysis for him or you have an urgent session for him you have to insert this jugular or this venous catheter to start hemodialysis for him you have to so you have to create a vascular axis for this patient to start hemodialysis for him and the heavy fistula after i told you the mechanism of the heavy fistula and how it's created and performed it will take about one and a half months or two months till it starts to function well and you can feel the thrill over it but now if the patient is coming to you in this acute setting and the emergency and you want to start hemodialysis for him are you going to tell him to go and have an AV to, do, 
to go to the vascular surgeon and insert an AV fistula, this will take a long time and the patient may be dead before this. So you have now to insert the AV, the venous catheter to start hemodialysis. As you can see here, there is the white part. This white part is inserted inside inside the vein till the blue this to till the blue side till the blue part. So the white part is inside is inserted inside the vein till the blue mark till the blue mark. And the triangular part above the blue part this is outside the skin is outside the surface of the skin. And you have in the above above the triangular part, you can see in the upper part there is the blue and the red line. The red line will take the blood from the patient and the blue line will return the blood to the patient. So you can ask this blue line and red line, one is taking the blood and the other is returning the blood, so they will mix inside the white part. Actually, this not happen. Why? Because the red is inside the white part, which is inserted inside the vein, there is, there is two separate tubes, one connected to the red line and the other connected to the blue line. The one which is connected to the blue line has an opening at the lowest part or the tip of the catheter. And the one connected to the red part has opening at the side. And both opens are away from each other about two or three centimeters. And there are two separate tubes inside the white part, one for the red and one for the blue. Okay, this next picture you can see here in this in this image that the white part is inserted inside the vein, the jugular vein, and the triangular area is outside and the blue line and the red line are outside so these are outside the surface of the skin but the white one is inserted inside and both don't mix one has an opening at the tip and the other has the opening at the side so they are separated from each other and the blood don't mix to have a high efficiency of the hemodialysis station and avoid recirculation process to happen. So where we can insert the hemodialysis caster? The first and the most preferred site is the right jugular like this image. The next site is the right femoral, then the left jugular and then the left femoral. So one can ask me, can we insert inside the subclavian? Okay, this subclavian is now obsolete for us to insert inside it because it it can have sclerosis rapidly and if the patient will need a fistula after this if you do an AV fistula in the arm where the subclavian has have sclerosis the fistula will, will not function well but if the patient has no other access the jugular access is now not good and the femoral also and you need to insert an access for him or he will and urgent urgent for urgent hemodialysis or he will die so it may be as an acceptance at this time after this now i have told you again to this hemodialysis machine and again to our hemodialysis unit now i have told you about the vascular access either the AV fistula or the catheter. Now again, I have to tell you about this bottle which is inserted at the lower part of the hemodialysis machine. In each unit, when you enter, you can see the machine have two bottles at its lower side, or you can see one bottle and a capsule. This capsule or the other bottle the second bottle or the capsule are for the bicarbonate and the first bottle is the dialysate bottle. Inside this dialysate bottle you can find a fluid. This fluid have a component similar to the plasma component so they will be 
exchange with the blood of the patient except for the bicarbonate which is in a separate bottle or in capsule like this because if the bicarbonate is in the same dialysate bottle it will precipitate at the bottom uh, if it reacts with the calcium or other substance inside this lovely machine the dialysate and the bicarbonate with the water coming from the purification unit will mix together and will pass inside the filter if you look at the filter you can see that the filter have a side for the entrance and the exit of the blood and there is side at the side of the filter there is a side of entrance of the mixture of the dialysate bicarbonate and the purified water and side of entrance of the water also so this is the dialysate bottle we have different concentrations of the dialysate according to each patient you can use different dialysate components some dialysate have high potassium i mean by high potassium the potassium is about 2.4 other dialysate have intermediate the potassium is about 2 and others have lower than 2 so if your patient coming with low potassium actually I have to ask you what is the normal potassium level for our patient the normal is 3.5 to 5 so if usually usually most of our patient needing dialysis have a high potassium level actually more than 6 and maybe 7 so we usually use the intermediate or the low potassium concentrations but if the patient is coming with hypokalemia which is not common you may use the high potassium concentration to avoid more hypokalemia so this is the composition of the dialysate here you can see that the sodium is the same the potassium is this is the intermediate one we usually use this one it's about two the chloride usually equal the bicarbonate actually is not inside this bottle but the bicarbonate usually will be inside the capsule or another bottle but after it it is mixed with the dialysate inside the machine it will be about 35 actually the normal bicarbonate for our patient is 22 to 28 but usually our patients are acidotic and have a low bicarbonate concentration lower than 20 so inside the filter we will describe later there will be an exchange between the higher and lower concentration so if the patient have on the blood side high potassium level and on the dialysate side there is a low potassium level there will be an exchange between the higher to the lower till the potassium level now reach an equilibrium between both sides the, the, the diffusion or the exchange will stop I will, I will give you an example if the patient have a potassium level 7 and the dialysate concentration of potassium is 2 so, so the potassium will pass from the blood side to the dialysate side till there is an equilibrium which mostly occur as the normal level which is about 4 and after this there will be no exchange on the other side if this patient will have acidosis the bicarbonate will be low and this is on the blood side the bicarbonate imagine it, it it may be about 10 or 12 on the dialysate side if the bicarbonate is 35 there will be an exchange between the blood and the dialysate but now the blood will take the, the bicarbonate from the dialysate till there is an equilibrium which mostly occurs at the normal between 22 and 28 the exchange now can stop also the dialysate doesn't contain toxins but the blood contain many toxins so these toxins and creatine will pass from the blood side to the dialysate side so now the dialysate will carry the high potassium and the toxins and will get away from the other opening on the side of the filter to be thrown away behind each dialysis machine you can see there is a pipe which will take the excess toxins and 
the dialysate after coming out of the machine and throw it away. So this is actually the components of the dialysate. So now we have to talk about this filter which carry a lot of process inside it or many processes will be performed inside it and we have different sizes of the filter we have size starting from for the adult starting from 1.4 1.3 up to 2.1 this size accord will be written on the filter what is meant by this size this is the size of the membrane inside the filter this is the size of the membrane or the surface area you can find it's the surface area of the membrane which is coiled inside this filter you can see there is a red part of the filter this red part where the blood will enter and the blue part at the bottom where the blood will come away and there is two openings at the side where the dialysate will enter and where the dialysate can get away I told you that inside the filter there is a membrane this membrane if you can look at this lovely image above you can see this is a hollow tube the membrane is formed like hollow tubes inside the filter like this and on the side the side wall of the hollow tube you can find there is many many pores this pores like this picture here on the bottom you can see there is many many pores and this one is magnified so you can find the pores on the side of the wall of this hollow tube so there will be an exchange this membrane which is formed in the form of many tubules or many hollow tubes the blood will pass inside these tubes the blood will pass inside these tubes these tubes are based on in the dialysate so the blood will pass inside these tubes and the dialysate will be on the outer surface of the tubules and through these pores on the wall or on the side wall of the fibers or the side wall of these tubes of the membrane there will be an exchange between the dialysate and between the blood which happen all over the session of the dialysis okay so you can see here in this lovely picture here at the upper part this is the site where the blood enter the filter or the dialyzer on the picture on the side you can find that the header of the filter the blood enter inside the header and then it's distributed distributed to many hollow or many fibers or mini tubules which are the red red thin tubules these tubules the blood will pass inside all over the session after its distribution between these tubules you can find or you can see the blue is the dialysate so the tubules where the blood pass are based or are in are you can see the dialysate passing between them so the exchange will happen all the time and at the bottom of the filter or the dialyzer you can see the blood will be collected again will be collected again at the bottom and pass through the blue line so the blood will be collected again from this tubules at the bottom and the bus through the blue line if you look at the the real or the actual picture of the hemodialysis machine you can find at the upper part 
the red line which carries the blood on the side you can find the blue which take the dialysate out of this filter and at the bottom you can see the blue line which takes the blood out of the filter and on its side you can see the red one which will take the dialysate inside the filter or the entrance of the dialysate to the filter so the blood will pass from above to downwards why the dialysate will pass from down to upwards again the blood will pass from above to downwards and the dialysate will pass from down to upwards this is called counter current what is meant what is meant by counter current the blood pass in opposite direction to the dialysate why they pass in opposite direction why not on the same direction so the exchange can occur all over the filter from the lower part to the upper part and each time the dialysate can exchange with different amount of the blood so we can get the highest efficacy required from the dialysis and the most we can exchange between the blood and the dialysate again so the blood will pass inside the hollow fibers as i show you in the picture before or the slide before and the dialysate will be around these fibers and through these hollow bores through these bores on the side of the filter there will be an exchange i have to tell you that these bores have different sizes and according to the size of the bores each particle can pass so usually large particles like albumin don't pass through this throw these bores because the size of the albumin is larger than these bores i can give you an imaginary example if you put your fingers try to imagine with me if you get a cup full of water a cup full of water and you be, you put your fingers inside this cup now your fingers now your fingers are like the tubes where the blood pass now your fingers are like the tubes where the blood pass and the water in the cup around your fingers are the dialysate now you can imagine this it's an easy example to imagine inside this filter we have two different processes that happen the first process is the diffusion where the high concentration can pass to the low concentration like i told you before if you look at this picture you can find that the side with the high concentration these particles with high concentration in the next picture will pass to the side of the lowest concentration till the equilibrium occurs like i told you before if the patient blood have high serum potassium it will pass to the other side till the equilibrium occurs also the opposite can happen if the dialysate have a high concentration of bicarbonate it can pass to the blood of the patient this will happen all the time till there is equilibrium and the exchange stop so now one of you can ask me this is with the part this will happen with the particles of concentration with concentration that may be higher on one side and lower on the other side so this will happen with the particles that have concentration like toxins like potassium like bicarbonate so what about the water how can the water pass is a dialysate contain water and also it's mixed with the purified water coming from the purification unit or the water unit and if the patient have water also or excess fluid in his body how this will happen the water will not pass under the effect of concentration or diffusion so this will have the other process or will this this will 
need to know the other process that happen inside this filter. The other process which happen inside the filter or inside this machine is the convection. What is meant by the convection is to exert a pressure on one side of the membrane so the water will pass to the other side under negative pressure. So the water will pass to the other side under the negative pressure. This is a, this process can be adjusted on the machine, which is known as the ultra filtration. So the water will pass to the other side, and while with the passage of the water, it will also carry carry with it solutes that are dissol dissolved in it. Like this, under pressure, the water will pass to the other side, and the excess water under the process of convection or ultrafiltration will be carried away with the dialysate to be passed away behind the machine. So again, now I have told you about that the blood will be taken from the patient under the effect of the bump. It will be carried to the filter where it enters from the upper part where there is the two process of diffusion and convection will happen and there is an exchange with the dialysate which enter from the side of the filter and they get away from the other opening on the side of the filter with the counter current passing in opposite direction with the dialysate. Actually, there is something wrong in this picture. Someone will ask me, is this wrong in this picture that the dialysate is and the blood are running in the same manner? No, but this type of filter is different and here in this type of filter they will there are passing in the same not passing same direction but the dialysate that enter from blue is they enter from blue also and uh, uh, the, it come out from above but this is a different type from uh, of filter from the other one and at the bottom of the filter the blood will be collected again to pass through this blue line to the air chamber here which can detect the thrombosis or air embolism and give an alarm and then the blood returns back to our patient to finally end this session so i hope you enjoyed this journey inside the hemodialysis unit you know about the vascular axis now know about the blood pump what happens inside the filter you know about the dialysate concentration and the dialysate you know about the air chamber and finally thank you